Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to review how you can work very hard to try and get released as early as you possibly can and then lose it all. My name is Mark Gladstein, the physician founder of Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service. Good time credits. This allows you to get 54 days off a year, off your sentence, and it's calculated really not at the end of your sentence, but it's calculated on January 1 or by the first of the year rather than waiting to the end of the year. Earn time credits. Earn time credits comes from the programs you take through the First Step Act. And after you take, and this is an approximation, there's two caveats. First caveat is that after two years of programming, approximately of taking these classes, that will equal about a year off of your sentence. Um, we've all been reading the news and we understand that the Federal Bureau of Prisons is terribly understaffed. Their calculations for getting people their earned time credit, time off appropriately calculated is not going, is not being accurately calculated for everybody, but it, it's a big agency and it, unfortunately, it's just not working as it should, but this is the only game in town it's, as of this point, and they are getting better, but you're working very hard. So you, after two years, approximately for you, if you have a medium or low, a minimum or low rather pattern score after two years, that would equal about a year's worth of off your sentence. And then the more earned time credits you get would allow you more time in a halfway house or home confinement. If in fact you're entitled to the drug program, then that allows you up to another year, not a year, but up to a year off the sentence. But guess what? You can lose all of your good time credit and all of your earned time credits and you can wind up getting more time in prison. So how does this happen? You don't want to lose everything, but here's how, at least I figure you can do it. All phone calls are listened to. When you go into prison, initially they're seeing people cycle through prison you know, every day. And so when you come in, you're just a number or another cog in the wheel. All phone calls are listened to. All mail is read. All email is read. Obviously, they're not going to be able to read every mail going out. They are going to read. They are going to scan and read everything coming in. And they are going to read every email. And phone calls are going to be recorded and listening to. So therefore, don't discuss things that are illegal on the phone. If you have a business that is being run, if you have a business being run that's at home and you're in prison or incarcerated, read the orientation manual. You're not allowed to run a business. You cannot give advice on how to run a business from prison. You just cannot do that. I could discuss with you potentially what you can do, but you are not allowed to give any advice, email, snail mail, over the phone, because that can run up another charge. It can You can lose credits. You can be disciplined. Also, don't criticize or be condescending of any of the First Step Act programs that you're taking or the drug programs. I mean, I've heard stories where if people are taking RDAP or the drug program, and then they're, they are recorded on the phone saying, yes, I'm taking the drug program. I just want to get the time off and get out of here. They can be dropped from the program. And this is this would be after a year into it, taking the program and be given another year onto their sentence. They take away that year off. And so you don't want to be stuck in that particular position. So just don't criticize or be condescending. You know, again, email, general mail, phone calls, these are listened to or read. You will see cell phones. Don't use anyone's cell phone while you're in there. You may be tempted, but don't. Because if a phone number that is on your contact list shows up on that cell phone, because eventually all cell phones are found. And if that phone number is that is on your contact list shows up on that cell phone, you lose all that phone, all that earned time credit, all that good time credit, and you could wind up with another charge. And maybe you have to go to another prison. Don't use your the phone in prison and have a three-way call, have your family member or friend set up a three-way call. Again, read your admission and orientation manual. You're not allowed to do that. That will wind up with a disciplinary charge. These guards have been listening to phone calls <clears throat> since forever. And so you're not that smart. No secret codes to your friends. They've heard it all before. If you're trying to get something snuck into the prison or you want someone to do something for you, they've heard everything. You know, you it's just, they've heard everything before. Even if it's another language, they have interpreters. So I wouldn't do that. And so the penalties, I've already reviewed with you a bit, but the penalties can range from good time credit, earned time credit that you've you've worked hard to get can be taken away. You could be kicked out of the RDAP program or the drug program or First Step Act programs. Maybe you get a new charge. You could maybe wind up at a new prison. Not good. Not good at all. And they say being forewarned is forearmed. So I hope you pay attention. It's a short video, but you've taken, if you've spent all of your time working hard to work towards early release and you're 10 months into this, you don't want to lose everything because you got lonely one night and you made a phone call on someone's cell phone. I hope you found this helpful and I appreciate you taking time to listen. Stay safe. Have a good day.